name is Heidel, and welcome to the Pantheon, where today we're getting near the ends of Dungeons and Dragons. You know, we've had a lot of cards, and we've returned to the Simic value engine. That's right, it's Gretchen Titch Willow. A green and a blue for a 0 4 halfling druid. Pay 4 mana, a green and a blue, and 2 generic. Draw a card, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's a growth spiral attached to to a two mana zero four and you're paying a bit more for it. Is it all that interesting? Well, no, we've seen a lot of these sort of effects, but it is a halfling, you know, a nice little cute, cute little creature. And it's got a big booty, you know, four toughness. That's, that's quite a lot of junk in the trunk. Quite a cool card to be fair. And there's quite a few things we can do with it. So if you like these videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Going to make one of these for every single legendary creature. And by God, there's a lot of them. So please join me for it. Without further ado, let's have a look. My top five for Gretchen. Hansel, no, it's Hansel and Gretel, isn't it? Gretchen? Was Gretchen in Recess? I think Gretchen was in Recess. Cool cartoon, if you remember that. Anyway, because Gretchen has, you know, a big rump, Let's just sort of play around with that and, you know, well, play around with a nice big rump. <laughs> rump steak, of course. Two mana for assault formation. It's all about the booty. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And you can pay a green type creature with defender. It can attack this turn as though it did have defender. Not that interested in that bit, but pay three mana. Creature you control get plus zero, plus one until end of turn. Excellent bit of value there. And, you know, we've got a couple of ways we can sort of benefit from that. Tree Folk Umbra, three mana for an aura enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus zero, plus two. And assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And it's got totem armor. So if our commander would be destroyed, instead destroy the totem armor. So this makes our commander into a 6-6, six, six, which is quite the beat-down machine. And, you know, if so, it gets destroyed or someone tries to destroy it, well, it's not going to. We're just going to remove this, and then we got our 0-4 again. So meanwhile, while we're attacking him for massive damage, we can start generating some via city activated ability. Then if we're talking about booties, Can Silver Golem, one of my first commanders, uh, by God, was that a miserable deck? This is a card that's all about the booty. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked, it gets minus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. Really interesting. So becomes an 8-8 eight, eight, uh, if, you know, you have Assault Formation on the field. And pay 1, target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equals to its converted mana cost until end of turn. That's a really awesome ability. One of my favourite things to do with it is if our opponents, you know, generally our opponents play mana rocks, things like that, and then they board wipe going, ha, 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 I'm going to kill all your creatures. Well, you just point one mana at each one of their artifacts, they become creatures, and then they wipe all of their mana rocks. It's a lovely thing that you can do. Then, talking about booty, we've got Anhava Constable. Look at him. He looks majestic. Three mana for a two, one plus star, and its toughness is equal to one plus the number of green creatures in play. So that's not just our green creatures. Obviously, our commander counts. This counts itself. It's everybody's creature. So if you're playing against a token deck, this is going to be absolutely massive, at least in terms of its toughness. Then we've got Tree Folk Seedlings, a really cool piece of art, you know, a big thing throwing a rock. Looks like a, a football throw. Three mana for a two star. Its toughness is equal to the number of forests you control. So, you know, we can have a bunch of forests in play. We are a green blue deck. And because our commander cares about lands, you know, that might come up later. We're going to have a bunch of lands on the field. So, you know, most of them can be forests. Then Sheltering Word is a nice bit of protection for our commander. Two mana for an instant type creature control against Hexproof on the to turn. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So we're going to gain four. I mean, will it be all that relevant in a game? Hopefully, you know, gaining some four life. It's not the worst thing that's ever happened. And then we got Mirren the Moaning Well, a legendary land that taps around colors. Pay three, tap it, and sacrifice creature. You gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. So if someone's going to remove our commander, you know, there's nothing we can do with it. Sacrifice her and get some life for it. You know, a ni nice little sacrifice outlet. Which brings me on to number four. And at number four, we've got, well, our commander is a druid. And I really like the sort of druid archetype. You know, the sort of 
everyone sort of gravitates towards elves, goblins. Druids is like elves light. And there are some really cool things you can do with it. So Guilt Leaf Arch Druid is a five mana of three, three. Whenever you play a Druid spell, you may draw a card. So really nice if you're leaning into that Druid archetype. Tap seven untapped Druids you control. Gain control of all lands target player controls. That is utterly crippling. If you've ever had this happen to you, it's miserable. But, I mean, if we're doing it, <laughs> I'm quite happy about the whole thing. And a lot of sort of ramp creatures are uh, indeed druids. So, Seaton Corrosion Protector is one of the better ones because it's triple green for a 2-2. Tap an untapped druid you control, add green to your mana pool. So that turns absolutely every one of your druids into a mana dot. And the cool thing about this ability is it works, works exactly the same as Azami's ability. So it's this creature that's doing the tapping. So it gets around summoning sickness. Really, really cool. Then Druid of Purification, four mana for a 2-3. Two, two, when it ends the battlefield, starting with you, each player may choose an artifact or enchantment you don't control. Destroy each permanent chosen this way. So this is a nice political tool, get everyone turning against each other. And you're going to be destroying three of the best things on the field or you know, one of the biggest threats. Really, really cool. And, you know, if maybe in you're in blue, if you're flickering, well, this is a good card to flicker. Then we've got Spring Bloom Druid. All these Druids, very nice. Three mana for a 1-1 one, one Elf Druid. When it ends the battlefield, you may sacrifice land. If you do, search your library for up to two basic lands, put them onto the battlefield taps, and shuffle your library. Really, really nice bit of ramp. And then if you have Seaton on the field, you know you're going to be tapping him this guy for mana. And if you have the Arch Druid, you're going to be drawing cards. Very similarly, we've got Root Weaver Druid. Three mana for a 2-1 Elf Druid. This is a sort of an interesting political tool. It accelerates you, but it does accelerate your opponents. Is that worth it? Well, you can make some friends doing this, you know, maybe bargain with them. When it ends the battlefield, each opponent may search their library for up to three basic land cards. They each put one of those cards onto the battlefield tapped under your control, and the rest onto the battlefield tapped under their control. Then each player who searches their library this way shuffles it. And then we've got a nice little druid knocking around for, you know, all sorts of benefits. Then this is a cool card, Mentor's Guidance. Three mana for a sorcery. You may cast this spell, copy it if you control a planeswalker, cleric, druid, shaman, warlock, or wizard. Scry one, then draw two cards. So if we've got our commander, uh, draw a card, sadly. Sadly, it's not that good. But this, you know, scry one, draw a card, scry one, draw a card. Is that good for three mana? Yeah, I think it is, to be fair. Is the better options in blue? Yes. But this is a cool sort of flavorful card. So I definitely put it in the deck. Then we've got Stone Cedar Hero Fant. Four mana for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever land comes into play under your control, untap Stone Cedar Hero Fant. And it taps to untap target land. Excellent, excellent card. I love this card. Three, four mana for a 1-1. One, one. Nah, not the best, but... Landfall, we're going to be putting lands into play with our commander's ability. We're going to get lots of value from this. And speaking of lands entering the battlefield, let's have a look at my number three pick. It's Lotus Cobra. Ooh, very nice. So the cool thing about this, and Stone Seed the Hierophant is, you know, exactly the same. This generates mana whenever a land comes into play, which is really cool with our commander's ability. Maybe if we reduce the cost of it and, you know, uh, maybe have lands coming in that tap for two, we could maybe go sort of infinite with this. So Lotus Cobra, two mana for a 2-1 with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Add one mana of any colour. So that's really cool because, you know, activate our commander's ability for four, put a land in, we get a mana back. So... It's nice. And that leads me on to something like Tyler's Provisioner. Three mana for a 3-2. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a food token or a treasure token. The thing we're interested in here is, well, food. I'm getting fatter by the day. But the treasure is what we're after because you can tap and sacrifice it to add one mana of any color. So again, it's rebuying some of the mana that we've lost by using our commander's ability. Then we have Avenger of Zendikar, an absolute game ender. Seven mana, five, five. When it enters the battlefield, creates a zero one green plant creature token for each land you control. And landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a one one count on each plant creature you control. Incredibly powerful. This is going to win you games. And it's just a big army of idiots, really. Well, plants, if you want to be, you know, specific. Then we've got Tyler's Tracker, three mana for a 3-2 whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Investigate, which means you get a clue token that you can sacrifice to draw a card. As if, you don't want, as if you're not drawing enough cards in blue anyway. 
would have been sacrificed to put a 1 1 counter on Tyler's track. So this can become a nice big threat. Then we've got Rampaging Balos. 6 mana 6 6 with Landfall whenever a land ends the battlefield under your control. Create a 4 4 Green Beast token. Simple. Just beastly. <laughs> anyway, I see Asai. As Asai. Tyrant of Jaya Straits. 6 mana for a 5 5. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Absolutely fantastic. And it's when a land enters, you don't have to actually be playing the land. So this works with our commander's ability. Then Scoot Swarm, swarming little insect things. Three mana, one, one, landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a one, one green insect creature token. If you can draw six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm. And that can get out of hand ridiculously fast. And we're going to be dumping so many lands onto the field, it's just going to be utterly chaotic. Which brings me on to my number two pick. And this is all about the lands we want to be playing in the deck. And the number one is Simic Growth Chamber. It's a land, enter the battlefield tapped, and it enter the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. And it taps for a green and a blue. Now this is so, so cool, because if you're playing something that untaps a land, you know, when it enters, uh, the one mana artifact, uh, the, there's modern deck about around it. Um, oh God. I can't remember its name, but if that comes in, this is going to untap straight away, and then you have to bounce a land. So we bounce itself, but before that, we tap it for two mana, and then we can put it into play. So, you know, we're getting two mana discount on our commander's ability there. Maybe we could go infinite, possibly. Another cool land is Guildless Commons. It's uh, exactly the same, enters the battlefield tapped, and when it uh, enters, taps uh, for two but return a land to your hand's hand. I butchered that sentence completely. It's basically a colorless version, so you're going to get the colorless reduced from our commander's tax. Then another cool land that we can constantly be putting in is Oboro, Palace of the, in the Clouds. It's legendary land, it taps for a blue, and it can pay one to return it to its owner's hand. Really, really nice, so you can put it in, return it for one mana, then use your commander's ability, put it back in, just get tons and tons of landfall triggers. And the artwork's lovely. Then we've got Field of the Dead, which is fantastic with all of these sort of interesting lands. Enter the battlefield tap, tap for colours. Whenever it or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So with these bounce lands that we have, or the Karu lands as they were called, these, we can just get an absolute army of tokens, you know, using our commander's ability on our opponent's turn. We can create a blocker. Absolutely fantastic. Feel the dead. Amazing card. But how do we find all of these lands? Well, we've got Teleria West. It's a land that enters the battlefield tapped and it adds a blue. And one of my favorite mechanics in all of magic, it has transmute. Three mana, discard this card. Search your library for a card with converted mana cost zero. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So this can get any of the important lands we want to be playing, or potentially a Pact of Negation. Zero mana for an instant counter-target spell. At the beginning of your next upkeep, pay five. If you don't, you lose the game. Now, this is a, such a fun card, and I have literally no issue losing the game to this. And some of my favorite memories of Magic are when... I, I've countered something with this. I've gone to my next turn. I've drawn my card and everyone points out that I'm dead. Under the new rules, that can't be done, sadly, because you have to remind your opponent that they get a chance to go, oh, okay, yeah, I pay it. But that catching people out with this is just so much fun. Yes, it sort of feels bad, but you've just got to be able to laugh about it. Then we've got an interesting land here in Magosi, the Water Veil. Vale. Land that in the battlefield taps and taps for a blue. Pay blue and tap it, put an Eon counter on Magosi the Water Veil. Skip your next turn. Oh dear. But then you can tap and remove an Eon counter from it and return it to its owner's hand. Take an extra turn after this one. This is just a cool land. I, I, I can't think of any way to break it. Maybe if you stifle the... No, if you stifle the first activation, you don't even get the EM counter. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe sometimes you just want to skip a turn and then take an extra turn in a row. Just a cool land to put in. Which brings me on to my number one pick. And, you know, this commander is all about the activated ability. So let's reduce the cost of that ability. Biomance is familiar. Two mana for a mutant. 
Activate the ability of creatures you control costs two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana and ability costs to activate to less than one mana. So our commander's ability will cost just a blue and a green, which, you know, if we're talking about that bounce land trick, you know, when the bounce land comes in untapped, well, that green and a blue will pay for it and we can just draw our entire deck, put everything onto the field. Fantastic. It also uh, has tap the next time tag creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no going what one one cans on it. Yeah. Then training grounds is, you know, another version of this. Sadly, very expensive at the moment. One blue for enchantment. Activate abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana and ability cost to activate to less than one mana. Okay, it's expensive. Just proxy it. Who is going to care? You're just playing with your friends anyway, or just lo local people. If they care, say, oh, okay, fair enough, sorry. And, you know, write an angry Reddit post about it or something. Growth Spiral is the card that this commander is <laughs> based on. Two mana for an instant draw a card, put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Cool, just include it. And then Uro is just a much better version of this commander. Um, or at least a much different one. It's not got the activated ability. It's an enter the battlefield and attack trigger. You gain three life, draw a card, put a card, uh, land into play. But it's, you know, it's basically the same thing. Like Gretchen is just, you know, she's an admirer of her own. She's a zero four. She wants to be a six six one day. She just looks up and goes, by God, I wish I was as hideous as this. And those are my top five cards for Gretchen. Quite a cool commander. I mean, it's just a Simic value engine at the end of the day. We've seen them. Some people love them. Or at least love playing with them. Playing against them is a bit miserable. But, <laughs> you, you know, do whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Maybe uh, send me a tray of brownies. I'll be uh, seeing you soon. Bye.